Hey, how's it going? This is Seth from RE Tipster. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a website like Zillow to try and figure out what the value is for a parcel of vacant land. Zillow is definitely not the only website that you can do this with. You could also do this with something like Realtor.com. Uh, you could use Redfin in some markets. I actually have a separate video explaining a creative way to value vacant land using only Redfin and sometimes using something like Landwatch as well. I'm going to go ahead and link to that if you want to check that out too. But the focus of this video is just to explain the fundamental concept of how you use the information that's out there on a free website like Zillow to figure out what the market value is of a single piece of property. Trying to find the value of a piece of vacant land can actually be very, very difficult, a lot harder than it is to do with houses and buildings, because a lot of the data that we need to figure out the value of a piece of real estate depends on how much income that property is making or how much it costs to build that property or what similar properties are selling for and uh, with vacant land there is nothing on it so we can't figure out the cost of building something and usually with vacant residential lots it's not earning any income so that doesn't help us either all we have to go by are comparable properties in the market so similar parcels of vacant land in the near vicinity in what those sold for and sometimes you can find those and sometimes you can't just kind of depends on the area and what's been going on there but whatever the situation is i'm going to show you how i would go about doing this on something like zillow if i didn't have access as in any other information, paid software or websites, if I just had Zillow, what I would be looking at. So I'm going to use a market that's not far from where I live, just as a random example here. It's called Cedar Springs here in Michigan. So we'll go here. And uh, Zillow has actually changed up the layout of their website a bit over the years. And they've also changed up what their listings look like. So depending on when you're watching this video, it might be a little bit different than what you're seeing here, but the same general concepts should apply. And uh, the first thing you want to do once you find whatever market you're looking at is start using these filtering options they give you up here. And these are actually extremely useful if you you know how to use them. So anytime you're trying to appraise any property, what you want to find are comparable properties that have sold usually anywhere from six to 12 months in the past. Depending on how quickly market values are changing, if you're working on a fairly steady, stable market and there's not a whole lot of change going on, then you could go back 12 months. But if it's a market where things are rapidly going up or down, then you would probably want to narrow that down a little bit and maybe stick to the past six months. So first of all, I'm going to go right here where it says home type and Zillow is for any type of real estate for the most part. But again, we're just looking at vacant land in this scenario. So there's no point in me having houses on here because that's not what I'm trying to work with. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck everything on here except for lots and land. And we will leave it at that. And so once I've got that all set, I'm going to go over here to the uh, for sale tab. And we can either look at all of the properties that are currently for sale. So like they're listed and people are trying to sell these. And sometimes that could be appropriate if you don't have any sold comps or if there aren't very many properties that have sold in the past six to 12 months, then you may have to use for sale listings because there's just no other data to go by. But first, before I settle for that, I'm going to check on these sold comps and see how many of those there are. And it looks like there's actually a fair number of them here just looking at this map alone and uh, if we go over here to where it says more so we can get a lot more specific here about what types of vacant lots we want to see in here that are actually sold and probably the two most notable things we can adjust here are first of all sold in the last how many days do we want to go back one day seven days six months 12 months three years if we want to and the more you narrow it down you'll notice you'll get a lot fewer results over here I actually also just did something Thing by uh, clicking outside of that map. You'll notice that it's not just showing me Cedar Springs anymore. Now it's showing me everything in the area that's shown up here on this map. So that's another way you can expand the field of view. However, just keep in mind that the further out you go from your subject property, the less and less relevant those comps become because they're now in other markets that may have different things that impact the value of them. So that's just another thing you have to weigh and keep in mind. And also keep in mind, another way you can search here is not by by the city or the county name, but you can even go by like the zip code that the property is in. So we could do that too. I'm gonna go ahead and try that here. And you'll see that uh, it now gives us a new boundary and it gives us fewer comps and it zeroes in even closer than it was before. But uh, once we've got this narrowed down and we've specified how far back we want those comps to go, we could also specify the lot size. So say if we're looking at a property that is five acres in size, we 
we could say, hey, we only want to see the ones that are five acres in size. Or maybe we could say anywhere from two to 10 acres, just to make it a little bit more narrow than looking at literally everything on the market, because properties that are much larger are going to be cheaper on a per acre basis than properties that are smaller. And there's also a lot of other things that can impact property value when you're just talking about size. And you can see we've got even fewer comps now. And uh, just based on this alone, I mean, can we draw any real conclusions? Um, maybe. I mean, it kind of depends on how consistent they are, how similar these properties are to the property that we are evaluating. Like, does it share common characteristics, road frontage, location, views? Like, is the property even buildable? So it can be a very dynamic thing. But just looking at size alone, we can sort of see, okay, these are what different properties have sold for in the past six months based on their sizes. We can see the dollar amounts they sold for, the sizes of the property, and that definitely gets us somewhere. It may not get us definitively to an absolute answer, but it's a whole lot better than flying blind and just trying to come up with some value based on nothing. And uh, also keep in mind, if you're in a situation where there's just not that many sold comps based on the criteria you have in here, you could also switch back to for sale and see if that does anything different. And in this case, I'm getting even fewer comps. And this actually depends a lot on the real estate market when you're trying to do this. There have been other times where I've seen a whole lot more for sale comps than there have been sold comps. Typically, if the economy is going down and people can't sell their properties, that's when you'll see the opposite of what we're seeing here, where there's a whole lot of for sale comps and not that many sold comps. But uh, in this case, uh, we're getting more sold comps. So I'm going to go with that. And uh, something else I could do if I wanted to get just more information and just take other stuff into account is to click this remove boundary thing and just see more information and it's going to show me stuff like up here that isn't necessarily in the same zip code but you know it's it's probably close enough to be relevant and i could look at that as well i can also go over here and sort all these listings by low to high just to figure out okay what was like the bottom of the basement price that these properties sold for like what's the absolute minimum i could expect my property to maybe sell for assuming it was similar to these and i had it listed right now it'll kind of give an idea for that you could also sort this by lot size. Say if you wanted to look at the biggest ones first and go from there, you could do it that way too. Or you could also look at the highest to lowest prices, that kind of thing. And when you're doing this, you're inevitably going to come across examples like this 3.23 acres for 4.4 million. So part of the reason this is showing up here is because we removed that boundary and now it's, it's showing us comps that really are not good comps because it's located so far away from our subject property, wherever that is in Cedar Springs, where we started. And this is like in the city Grand Rapids, which is just a completely different market than Cedar Springs. So this is the kind of thing I would ignore, not only because it's in the wrong market, but also because that value is just crazy. Even if that did happen to be in Cedar Springs, the fact that nothing else on this list comes anywhere close to that dollar amount, that's clearly an outlier. I'm not going to use that unless our property happens to be exactly the same as this one, which it's almost certainly not going to be. And also just to kind of give you some context, a lot of appraisers, like when they put together a professional appraisal, in the end, what they come up with is just a few comps. You don't need like dozens of them. You just need a few apples to apples comparison comps or at least you know a green apple compared to a red apple as long as it's still an apple and it's at least somewhat similar that's kind of what you're looking for and say if our subject property was a five acre property and uh, we only see this one property right here in the list that is close to five acres whereas these other ones are you know 2.37 acres 3.2 acres 2.51 acres. They're not five acre properties. So are they similar enough? If those were our only options, we could just kind of do the math and reverse engineer this thing and figure out, okay, well, what is this 2.37 acre lot worth on a per acre basis based on this price? We could go 17,900 divided by 2.37 and we get uh, 7,552 bucks per acre. We could really simply just take that times five acres and come up with our property value for a five acre property, assuming everything else is very, very similar. We also have to keep in mind, first of all, I wouldn't start running these numbers just based on one comp. You'd probably want to get at least a few of them and then find like the median or the average price per acre and then start working based on that. Again, assuming that these are pretty reasonable, good comps to be using in the first place. But also keep in mind that the smaller a property gets, the higher the price or the value or the sale price is going 
to be on a per acre basis, just statistically speaking. If you were to look at thousands of vacant lots in the same area, that's just generally the trend that you're going to see. So we have to keep in mind that since ours is five acres and it's a little bit bigger than this one, we might want to apply some kind of a discount just to account for that as well. So instead of using that 7,500 per acre number, we could bring it down to just 7,000 even, or we could be even more conservative and make it 6,500 per acre times five acres and uh, come up with that. Or we could go 6,000. It's up to you. Again, it's not an exact science, but just trying to explain this is how you could use what information is there to back into your property value, depending on how many comps you have and how close and similar those are to the subject property you're trying to evaluate. And also keep in mind, just to make this even more complicated, it's not just about size. That's certainly one important thing, but you also have to think about the location. Like how close is it to town? What is it near? What does it have access to? Does it have utilities? Like how much work would it take to start building on this thing? What's its highest and best use? You can go on and on and on. And this is what appraisers are hired to do. And this is what they think about when they're trying to find good comps. But if you're trying to do this yourself, those are some of the other things you might want to be thinking about. Now, another thing you can do here with Zillow is use their draw tool. And basically what this allows you to do is instead of using the boundary that it puts around for that zip code, is you can literally just draw a line around whatever area you want to include and it kind of creates that boundary for you and then you can apply that and it will only show you the comps in that area that you drew sometimes this can be really helpful if you're trying to narrow down to like one specific neighborhood or one part of town because sometimes property values are a lot more or less on the other side of a highway or the railroad tracks or the lake or whatever and you can get even more insights beyond this once you actually click on some of these listings so let's go and just click on a random and one of these things like this one right here. And uh, when we click on this, it shows us a lot more information. We can click over to here through home details. We can scroll down here. You can see the price and listing history for this property. So you just gotta get an idea for the timeline of that. Uh, and I actually think this is a lot more helpful when you change this over to for sale properties, because when you click on these listings, let's change this back to uh, price low to high. We'll just click on one of these random listings. And uh, first of all, before I even click down here, you can see how many days each one of these properties has been listed on Zillow. And that alone can actually tell you quite a bit about the demand for real estate in this area. Like when people list these properties for sale, whatever price they list them at, whether that's an appropriate price or not, how long does it take for these things to sell? Is it the kind of thing where it's sitting on the market for months or years before somebody comes by and buys the thing? Or is it like a matter of weeks or days before the thing sells? And just historically speaking, having you know been aware of this particular market for about a decade now, I can tell you that uh, seeing as how a a lot of these properties have been on the market for less than 100 days. That tells me that as of right now, the demand for land in this market is pretty decent. If we click uh, back on this listing here, what this also tells us is how many views has this property had? How many people have saved this property? Meaning they actually want to keep tabs on it and not forget about the thing. Is that right there? I mean, it's going to be different for every individual property. But if you click around at a few of these things and just you know, see how many views these things are getting on average. How many saves are they getting? Go ahead and click on this one, for example. We'll check out that, okay? So this one's had 498 views over the past 57 days. That's a pretty decent amount of views. And what this is telling us is that in this market right now, there's a fair amount of interest for vacant land properties. Even if people aren't buying it, they're at least interested and they're looking for this kind of thing. And if you're somebody who owns vacant land and you're trying to sell that vacant land on a website like Zillow or whatever website you decide to list the thing on, that's pretty good news for you just because it means that there's a lot of people who want what you have to sell even if they're not going to buy your property they're at least interested in it and that means something for sure i've seen other markets where you know a property could be on the market for several months if not years and the thing has like 10 or 20 views and no saves and uh, that's not great news for those people because it means they're trying to sell something that people aren't interested in and don't really care about. So that kind of thing as well can just give you insights into the overall real estate market in that area and how easy or difficult it might be to list and sell your property if you have one to sell, in addition to figuring out what the thing might be worth. And uh, something else that uh, you can get from these listings is the name and contact information of whoever is listing this property. And uh, not all the time, but sometimes what this can indicate to you is, hey, maybe this is a real estate agent 
agent who knows a thing or two about vacant land if they actually have an active vacant land listing. The reason this kind of thing can be helpful is because given the difficulty that a lot of people have with valuing vacant land, it can be really helpful to have a person or two or three in a local market who has that local market expertise about, you know, this vacant lot is probably worth this because of this. There's growth in this area or there's a new school being built or a new employer is coming into town or maybe they list a lot of vacant lots and they deal with this type of property all the time and they can give you expertise and knowledge that you'll never have on your own. Sometimes they can be even smarter than like a local appraiser at what properties are worth. But not always. There's also a lot of real estate agents who are clueless about vacant land because all they ever deal with are houses. And in some cases, you'll come across somebody who just happened to get a vacant land listing and it's like the only one they're going to do that year. So they're definitely not an expert. They just happen to be the listing agent on this one property. But one way you can figure that out is to give them a call and ask them, hey, do you list a lot of vacant lots in this area? Like, are you actually somebody who has some expertise in this or not? You can usually figure out pretty quickly which people are the actual real players in terms of being a land specialized real estate agent. And you can do that with all these. As long as they are a for sale property, you can click on the listing and it will show you that agent's name and phone number. And it can be a pretty useful exercise to call not just one, but a few of these agents, preferably ones who have listed more than just this one vacant lot, but they actually have some ongoing experience listing and dealing with vacant lots in the area and just ask them, say, if I own this property and it's five acres in this area, you don't even necessarily have to tell them which property it is exactly. You could, but if you're worried about that for some reason, you could just sort of give them a hypothetical scenario. Say, if I own a five acre property or however many acres it is in this zip code or this neighborhood, and I want this thing sold within 30 days or three months or six months, just kind of indicate your level of motivation to sell, what price would I have to list this property at? What is going to actually get it to move? You could also give them a couple scenarios, like say if I wanted it sold cash or if I wanted it sold and I'm willing to offer seller financing. How much does that impact things? And just get their feedback. And again, I think you're probably going to find that when you call two or three agents, you're going to get different numbers from different people because sometimes one agent may have more expertise or knowledge than the other. And that's why you want to get more than just one person's input. Similar to the same reason why you don't want to just use a single comp. You want to get a few of them so you can kind of get a feel for different scenarios and examples. And one other way these for sale listings can be useful, even if you don't want to use them as comps, is just giving you more market awareness. And what I mean by that is when you see these other properties, like a two acre property that's listed for X amount of dollars or a five acre property that's listed for X amount of dollars and just compare and contrast that with your own. What this is telling you is what your competition is doing. So if you just imagine for a moment that you are the owner of the property that you're looking to buy and now you're trying to turn around and get the thing sold, what are the other real estate listings out there that you need to beat? How good is their pricing? How good are their pictures? How good are the property features? How long of those properties been sitting on the market because this essentially just tells you who you're up against. If you're going head to head with another land seller and you're both trying to sell your property as quickly as possible, are you going to be able to make your property listing look a lot better than theirs based on your acquisition price and the kind of profit margin that you want to see? Will you be able to list your property lower than theirs if you want? Will you be able to offer seller financing while all of your competitors are not? Are you going to be able to get better pictures or drone photography than your competitors. If you're seeing that these other listed properties have been sitting on the market forever and they're listed relatively low and they're doing everything right and they're still struggling, that should tell you something about how much of a challenge it's going to be for you when you try to sell your property. And on the same coin, if you see that all these other land sellers in the area are just doing a terrible job with their listings with terrible pictures or no pictures or prices that are just way too high, that could also indicate to you, well, it's not going to be that difficult for me to outdo these people because they're not doing a very good job and I'm confident I can do a much better job than them. So even if you don't use these listed prices to come up with a direct property value for your subject property, it can still just help you understand who the competitors are and how good or bad of a job they're doing and how easy or difficult it's going to be for you to sell your property and get your property listing noticed among their property listings, if that makes sense. Now, something else that's definitely worth mentioning while we're on this whole topic topic is that everything I've just showed you is like the manual slowest way to do it, but it 
can and does work. It's just like the slowest way to get the job done. And it requires a lot more thinking because you have to like look at each individual listing and like remember stuff. But there are ways to do this a lot faster with a lot less manual work with some paid software options that are available now. And uh, as of the date of this recording, there's two that I know of. One of them is Price right here. And the other one is called Price Boss. And uh, they do a similar thing, but they go about it in a different way. So Price has kind of like this artificial intelligence algorithm. I can't pretend to understand exactly how it works, but you basically plug in a property parcel number or address and it can find the relevant data on these websites and kind of like pull it all together for you to try to figure out that market value pretty quickly and easily. But you don't really have control over what it's pulling or why it kind of just makes this decision based on the geolocation or the market. So it's definitely very fast and easy. They've actually got a very detailed a separate video that explains exactly how priced works. Priced actually does a whole lot more than just valuing a single property, but that comping process is one of many things built into the software. If you want to check that out, RE Tipster also does have an affiliate link uh, to priced, retipster.com forward slash P R Y C D. If you want to check that out, there's also Price Boss, which kind of does what I just showed you here, but it's a lot faster and easier because you can just copy the URL and it actually works from realtor.com where you search for the market, kind of like I just showed you on Zillow. You set all these filters exactly the way you want. And once you have that set, you just copy and paste the URL into Price Boss and it will pull all of those comps into one place and just help you run these calculations a whole lot faster and draw meaning from them without so much manual work. It also has a realtor analysis tool that can help you figure out who these realtors are in the area that have the most land listings. It kind of just helps you drill down a lot faster to who the land specialized real estate agents most likely are based on the data that's out there. And if you were to try to do that manually, it could take you a long time to do it accurately, but Price Boss does it all for you pretty quick. So we don't have an affiliate link to Price Boss, but there is a discount uh, coupon code you can use. If you just put RE Tipster in here when you sign up, you can get a discount on Price Boss as well. Or you can use neither one of those and uh, just kind of do it the slow way like what I just showed you. But even if you don't use that software, which again, they work differently, you won't necessarily get the exact same results because they just go about it with a different process. But the process does have some logic behind it and it just saves you a whole lot of time regardless of which one you use. And honestly, like this is what a lot of appraisers will do anyway. They'll kind of go through the same process. They may have access to more information than you do. Like for example, if you're in a state like Texas or Utah or Idaho, which are non-disclosure states, and you literally can't see sold comps on a website like Zillow, or at least not very many of them, because that information is not publicly available, you have to use a licensed real estate agent to see that. So if you're one of those states, then you're going to have no choice but to use for sale comps. But even those can be useful as long as you understand which comps make the most sense and any adjustments you might have to make to those. So anyway, just wanted to walk through that process with you. I hope you found that helpful. Best of luck.